Modern manufacturers offer an unimaginable number of dolls for children for decorating the interior, collectibles, and many others. But among the whole variety of dolls, handmade dolls stand out the most. They are individual, peculiar, but at the same time special and unique. I've been painting since 1992. At that time, small figures resembling a little Natsuki were popular. In Almaty, we had an enterprise that was engaged in the development and painting. There was a special technological department of painting. They took it very seriously, studied traditions, life, and created such samples on the basis of the collected material. They were very small, maybe of this size or even smaller, just like buttons. When everything fell apart, I became a freelance artist, and I began to order such figures based on a special drawing from a turner. The doll is an amazing invention of mankind. Having appeared in ancient Egypt for about 4,000 years ago, it's popular to this day. Primitive dolls in the form of a rough block of wood without arms and legs, with a head decorated with a wig of vegetable or rock threads. It's difficult to say what the first purpose of the doll was, but according to the samples and finds, they were associated with ritual rites. Throughout its development, the doll reflected all the changes that took place in society, being a small copy of the person himself. From simple figures, they turned into luxurious dolls made of clay, porcelain, wax and wood, with bright outfits and jewelry. Dolls became examples of female beauty. Well, it was always a toy, easily gaining the attention of children and adults. The object of our today's episode will be the painting of a decorative doll. Whatever size the dolls are, they all go through the same stages of the painting process. The very first stage is the primer. It's necessary so that the surface is stronger. If this is not done, then the paint spreads over the surface and can drip. In addition to the strong surface, the paint is not much absorbed, that is, a much less of it is required. The doll must dry after priming, it takes about a day. I now have a primer made of PVA glue. The main thing is that the solution is liquid and sufficiently sticky. After the surface is primed, it dries for about 2-3 hours. I usually level it with sandpaper the next day. The wood blank is ground with fine sandpaper, so that the paint lays evenly. Sand it with light knead movements without strong pressure, otherwise the applied layer will be erased. After polishing the workpiece, the artist begins to transform it with a pencil. The first to appear are the contours of the face, on which it's necessary to work especially carefully to bring out the symmetry. Next in line are the hands, clothes and headdress. And now, finally, we can start the painting itself. For this, we will need a palette, brushes and colors. 
The combination and order of colors depend on the artist's choice. A skilled craftsman just needs to touch a doll with a brush and the chapon turns green. Most often, the paintings are made with acrylic paints. They are environmentally friendly, safe, easy to apply, quickly dry, and after coating, they do not crack and dim. A face painting requires special skill. A tiny mistake of this stage means that you will ruin all previous efforts. The eye socket, iris, eyes are thoroughly indicated. The eyelid area is darkened so that the look is expressive. Eyebrows and hair are drawn in the same color as the eyes. The rules are the same here as in makeup. Either the eyes or lips can be bright. Some craftsmen additionally draw cheeks. One layer is usually not enough, so after it dries, there will be another layer until the paint looks even. When the paint is of the right tone and there are no stroke marks, when it's smooth, we can start performing small details. A face has already been made here and now I will make hands. To do this, I take darker paint. Changing color, the master continues to revive the souvenir, drawing all the small details, buckle from the belt and jewelry. First, a sample appears and only then do I make a copy, but these copies are never identical, they are always different. There will be a darker jacket and I don't even know what will appear next because everything comes during the process. By the way, this is a costume of a married woman. This is evidenced by her braid, which was braided after marriage, and special jewelry was put on it. In addition, married women in Kazakhstan wore white-headed scarves. And later, after the birth of children, women put on kimishek. Now, the only thing left is to cover a doll with varnish, and it's ready. Here I have a ready-made couple, they are replaced by the next one. Perhaps there will be changes, perhaps I will change the color of the hat. Maybe the fur will be of a little different shade. This is such an urban couple. The world of this lovely wooden creations is full of surprises and mysteries. The doll is not born itself, it is created by a person. It acquires life through the imagination of the craftsman and preserves in itself his way of life, thoughts, culture and traditions.